Hey, we're back with Chris Greenman and Johnny Thunder. Love the shirt, Chris. Rump. There you go. Yeah. To win it for the third time. You know, something like that it says. Of course. Anyways. Yeah. I love I love the quote. Yeah, that's nothing. all your attire. It's Trump attire, I'm guessing, right? It's pretty. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do after the election. I'm going to be screwed for clothes. So <laughs> yeah, the anyway, next guy, you're like, hey, man, <laughs> these are classics. <laughs> if, any, if anyone, if any of our listeners, like the four of them, if any of them want to send me some shirts after the election, I would appreciate it very much. Right. You, whoever you are discovering our channel for the first time, it's actually a good show. And we have a unique take on life. And you might dig into it. Just, you know, let it go a little bit longer. Like if you can't fall asleep. Let us bore you to sleep, but listen to it anyways. You know what I mean? And and it's you got. I mean, it's getting better too, right? I mean, it's like you know, we're getting we're getting more followers. We're getting all that kind of. So it's 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 growing. You know, it's nice. Practice makes perfect. I wish and, I was handsome as you. I didn't have to wear the Johnny Thunder costume. But yeah, well, uh, everybody I knows I, I look like an old gopher. So I'm gonna keep wearing this leopard skin jumpsuit and uh, showing up with Mr. Greenman here. It's very realistic, though. That's the thing I like the most. I think about your. Uh, yeah, your get up is it's pretty. It's pretty sick. It's pretty cool. So For, forget plastic surgery. This is right. my new thing. It's my new jam, bro. Right. So uh, here we go. We're gonna take. Uh, we're gonna review this. There was some craziness with Robert De Niro. Did you see some clips on that? Oh my god! What I, a I lunatic! Really, yeah. He he. At one point, he was like one of my favorite actors. He just went to uh, my zero favorite actor. But anyways, we'll let everyone else decide why that is. But the guy is like freaking an idiot but he's bought and paid for by who knows what about he's a he's what a, what you would call a uh limousine liberal uh -huh. he doesn't have to deal with the consequences of what he's talking about <laughs> exactly because he's kept the money and they pay for it and hey just say what we want to say shut up here have a pizza whatever i don't know but i'm gonna <laughs> put this new video up oh there she is one of our oh, favorite like, ladies yeah, this is chris's like... recommendation let's see what she's got to say author of groundbreaking books including the war on the west the madness of crowds and the strange death of europe douglas murray it's the strange death of europe i want to speak to you about but first i need your take on what we saw today outside the new york courtroom where donald trump's trial is being conducted we had robert de niro make an appearance with this important message i don't mean to scare you no no wait maybe i do mean to scare you if Trump returns to the White House, you can kiss these freedoms goodbye that we all take for granted. And elections, forget about it. That's over. That's done. If he gets in, I can tell you right now, he will never leave. He will never <laughs> leave. He already left he once. That. Yeah, he already he left once, will Dingleberry. Never leave. <laughs> There you have it. Elections, democracy, it's all over if uh, Trump wins. It got even worse than that, Douglas. I'll be featuring some of the lunacy later in the program. But what did you make of that? And will it have any impact on the voting public? Uh, the only impact that Robert De Niro and other celebrities have when they do this kind of thing is to uh, encourage more voters to silently vote for Trump. Uh, first of all, I mean, what is somebody like De Niro thinking of? What are they, who, who does he think he is? What does he think his role is in society? I mean, <laughs> he's an actor, and I think a very good one, which is one of the reasons I really dislike it when I see an actor like him do this, because right. afterwards you can't help but watch him in a role and then think, oh, there's that guy who's a rather tedious political bore. Um, uh, but it is tedious, <laughs> yeah. and it is boring. He has no special insights. Um, and so why is he standing in front of a bank of microphones offering his insights uh, about Trump? I I've always thought that this that this celebrity, you know, endorsement, celebrity commenting thing um, backfires on the people that they support. Uh, I think most ordinary Americans, like most ordinary Australians and Brits, we, we don't really like to be talked at. Yeah. Uh, by you know mega celebrities who imagine they've got insights they just don't have oh my goodness oh my goodness well you know what's what you know what's funny about you know what's funny about this is is like he he's so he, he's so like even the rock so the rock i like i used to like as an actor you know I, I thought he ingested a little bit too many steroids but whatever you know it got him to where he's at and we all know people that do that it's an inflatable and, uh, man yeah yeah 
No, but several. He, so when when Biden came out, he was totally pro, you know, pro Biden. He voted for Biden. He was telling everyone against Trump and all that stuff. But then at least he admitted that he messed up, and he's like, he's like, you know what? I was wrong. And man, it takes a, quite a guy. It was because he's a very popular uh, person, and I think he's the most one of the most searched people in the world, and um, besides Trump, and and he took it back, and he's like, you know what? I'm going. He's going to go a different direction with like with Trump or whatever. And but but more importantly, he 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 said he realized how much BS and how many how much lies the media was doing, and so that takes a, that you know I I respect him for that. And, you know, I didn't like when he w- was going against Trump um, because I'm like, OK, now I'll never watch anything with you. I think you're big. You know, I, I was already not too happy with that. But it's interesting when these people come out and they want to put their careers on the line. You know, it's mostly people that have already had their career. You don't see anybody up and coming doing that because they're not incredibly stupid, you know. Right. But um, only when someone's in the, like Robert Nero, he's not going to make another movie. I don't think, you know, I mean, if, I don't know. But what's he going to be straight to video? I don't know. I mean, really, the guy is an actor, so he's been pretending to be someone else his whole life. So how can you take him seriously when his job is to pretend to be somebody? I mean, take 100%. me seriously. I'm Johnny Thunder. But yeah. <laughs> this is the real yeah, Johnny but, but what's coming out of your mouth is important, you know? Right. I mean, he's he's just talking. And he has, like like what that guy that uh, just said, he's, he doesn't have – he doesn't have an argument. He doesn't have a leg to stand on. A he's just solution. He doesn't even have a solution, like you're saying, right? No, he's just spitting stuff out. You know, it's it's like, he, and something he doesn't. He's he's not an authority on it. You know, it's like if you and I are talking about certain things, you know, we we probably know a little a lot about than more 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 than about than most people. You know, in certain sub, subjects and categories. And I think that's for anybody. Every, everybody has their niche. But Roberts is not politics for sure. You know, I mean, his is acting, just like you said. So you stick to your wheelhouse, as everyone says. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if you want to talk MMA, yeah, okay, you and I can, we'll be fine with that. Okay, but you want to talk about, you know, tennis? Whatever. Yeah, badminton, you got me. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, certain, know. Su- certain subjects, some certain su- biology and certain math. And, yeah, I won't have a clue. I'll be, I'll admit I'm an idiot. But at the same time, people just decide to pipe in. It's like, just shut up. Yeah. Well, isn't he like a hypnotist in a way? Because you get so used to him. Like people get married to the idea that the actor is that person. It's weird oh, yeah. how hypnotic, how hypnotic acting is. When you watch a movie, <clears throat> you get sucked and you think that guy's like Darth Vader, but yeah. he's just a dude wearing a mask, making a funny noise, and and then you know dramatic mu- music is being played in the background. What's well, he even watch, that, you know? that that latest cl- the, the clip we just watched that you just showed, he's like, forget about it. I mean, that's straight out of one of his movies, you know. I think yeah. Goodfellas or whatever the hell it was. I mean, that's not the way he talks. He just he he went back to to reading his lines or, you know, forgetting them and just remembering right there. But that's like something he would say in a movie, and and some people would be like, yeah, that's, you know, that's Robert the Godfather, Robert De Niro the Godfather, or whatever role he played. No, that was Al Pacino. But anyways, I get those mixed up. But anyways, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's true. These people are given this authority because they're on a huge screen. The illusion of grandeur. You're you're somebody because everyone's saying that you're somebody and they're passing the rumor around. It's just another version of influencers buying followers. I mean, but it's a yeah. guy that's on movie screens and therefore he's somebody and his opinion matters because he right. pretended to be somebody else. I mean, <laughs> honestly, you know, no, just let, let's get simple with that, man. He I pretended mean, I, to be someone else. I love Sylvester Stallone, but Sylvester Stallone, I mean, he and he does some cool stuff these days. You know, he 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 does some inspirational stuff, and I, and I I really like him. I always have, but at the end of the day, he's not a boxer, right? But he's he. A lot of people think he's like an authority on boxing. Like that's what that's what cracks me up. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of funny, man. I mean, a lot of people real boxers like, fighters walk walk out to his song about his fake fight. It's freaking great. It's like, it's... <laughs> I love this. I, I mean, you can't get better than that, right? It's like, do, 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 I mean, you're getting, you know, and then, all, but yeah, dude, that dude it's was not <laughs> There were cameras everywhere, and there were actors in the crowd, and the, the, the sweat was water or oil, and dude, nothing was real, man. Nope. <laughs> nope. It's not. It's it's like a lot of things. I yeah. want you to see the heckling, the great heckling. You're going to enjoy this, I think. 
Oh, okay. well, they, they, oh yeah. People on the left were were, were bad dogging uh, De Niro for sure. That was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. People, a lot of people, Trump supporters showed up and kind of like gave him a peace of mind. Yeah. Did you? Sure. You okay, got us. Go. You got us queued up for this one. Guys, little room, guys. Absolutely. Little room, guys. Again, right. Paid sellout. You. You. touch kids. You touch kids. You suck my. Your mother should have swallowed. We're in a tent. We're trying to be gentlemen in this world. The Democrats. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. There, he's acting. He's acting. Yeah. It's a great acting. This movie. You are gangsters. You're nobody. That guy was a good actor, right there. He was good. Yeah. You're done after this, my guy. <laughs> So Johnny, so yes. take take this crowd. This is in New York, which is one of the most liberal cities in the world, right? Yeah. Take that crowd, and you. I want you to imagine for a second. The verdict comes back. Uh, it's not going to probably come back today. It probably come back. Who knows when? But if they found if they, if they find Trump guilty, take that crowd times like a million, and. And you're, that's what you're going to have all across this nation. I predict it right now right. on Patriot XL. Yeah. That, that was my acting voice. What'd you think? It was good. It was good. I believe that you were that guy from the other video, that other podcast, that celebrity guy that I podcast with sometimes. <laughs> that famous pickleball player. That's what I know you oh, as. Oh, man. Yeah. That guy is something crazy, man. He's, yeah, he's good. He's good at pickleball. Pretty good. He's all right. Yeah. Well, if you haven't seen Chris Green in a while, you know him as an MMA professional sports host. In a lot of the early days of mixed martial arts fighting, but he's gone on to be Patriot XL, his true self. So he's going to talk about things that matter because right now we like MMA, but it's not as important as what's going on with the country. It's not going to make gas prices go up or down. It's not going to make you have to pay a bigger heating bill. It's not going to force you to, you know, lose your house or whatever. So there's a lot going on. You, you know, and a lot of the MMA fighters have have taken on the role of. of hey say enough is enough and they've they've put their spit on it and dana white doesn't care if you do that because he's a big you know he's good friends with trump he's and, trump's friend yeah he and, hey, the fighters like trump actually they love most him of them do. most of them do yeah. and that's kind of the cool thing about mma is like mma that you know fighters stay stay fighters i mean yeah a lot of them get caught up when they get a lot of money and they, they change and they, you know that happens to any human i hate to tell you but fighters in general you know they're a, they're a fighter at the heart and they're they're not going to they're not going to follow the, you know, the crowd, you know, and wear masks, you know, inside your car by yourself, you know, they're going to, they're going to lead more. So that's where you see the correlation, I think, with, with a little bit of common sense and what's right and kind of a patriot kind of mentality in fighters that you, that you, that kind of go along with, with the whole. Yeah, thing. it's parallel to the military, but the military has had a lot of uh, weird indoctrination as of late. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say the whole broad brush, but. I've asked friends that work around it, what's going on. It's not like it used to be. It, things it's have tough. changed. It really changed. You know, yeah, there's a lot I of mean, exceptions. It was more hardcore when I was in. Well, I hate to tell you, but you want your military tough. You want you, right. you want men being men. And, you you know, and sure, there's a lot of places for women in the military. They can do a lot of the jobs as technology goes on. But at the end of the day, there's a difference between a man and a woman, which is exactly why you don't want men that all of a sudden think they're girls competing in women's sports it's not fair for any of the movement that women have made any of the feminist movement it's it it, it just it's just it bites them in the butt because everything they've worked for goes down the drain when you start letting stuff like this out and it's not you're doing a disservice to our country man i mean it's it, it's awful you know the, the whole big the whole big game is it's not fair you know woe is me 
And the victim is the victim of the victim of the victim. And it goes endlessly. It's like one of those infinity mirrors, two mirrors looking at each other. Who's the victim? Well, if you're a victim, then they're a victim because you're a victim. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's like a play on words, but it only it's makes not, sense. It's not fair. I'll tell you what's not fair. There's no such thing as fair, by the way. <laughs> Go ahead. If, if, if I'm beating, you know, if I'm beating my wife, you know, I'd never do that. But if I beat, I was beating my wife and, and I'm really pissed off and some, some female cop shows up that's like, you know, five foot two, 120 pounds. And she's the only, she's a single man unit by herself and trying to stop me from beating her. Well, her only recourse is to shoot me. Otherwise she's going to be out in like two seconds. So that's not fair to uh, my wife. If she calls the police, that's not fair. And I know that's a little out there and I'm going to probably get some pissed off people about that, but that's just reality. I'm sorry. If you watch this part in the podcast, this is why it gets deep and dark. Deep and dark with Johnny Thunder and Chris screaming. Yeah. yeah. But, 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 because we hit subjects that everyone won't hit because they're afraid to, right? We'll hit the taboo. We'll dance around the, the you know, what words we're supposed to say or not. But bottom line is, you're right. If somebody shows up, they can't physically subdue a pure alpha breed of a man, then they shouldn't be doing the job. It's like when they wanted counselors to go disarm people or talk them down off the ledge. The guy with the AR-15 on a like, you know, half a pound of meth up his nose, ready to shoot it out with everyone. Calm down, Peter. Put that yeah, in the no. and Listen, and I know your feelings. He don't want to talk about no feelings. He wants you for target practice. <laughs> but I, And I'm sorry. I know you don't show your face, Johnny, but I know who you are. And the thing is, is like, it, same scenario with you. you right. You'll crush the person in three seconds and it's going to be exactly. like... And then she's that, that that cop's useless, you know? exactly. And you're bringing a gun to the scene now. Maybe you didn't have a gun, but now you got the officer's gun. I mean, there's so many things that we and, and you know, me being a former cop, you, you know, I can. I'm not pulling punches on this. I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. I'm just being re realistic, you know. I, it's from our from our former martial arts gym. We get to go, and we were invited to. We were, you know, with Dov teaching the Krav, and uh, teaching the Krav Maga. So we went over to the sheriff's department to see if we could pick up some business. And uh, the captain or whatever, the main sheriff invited us to graduation. And I was watching the techniques. Halt, halt. Hitting someone with a baton in the leg. Like, okay. I'll take that baton away from you very quickly. You know, it's no, like, exactly. Exactly. That's, it's like people are taking crazy leg kicks and they keep going and they fight the whole fight. And it's yeah. not even like, you know, it's not even a, a point where you could do that too. It's like, I guess a lot of the police, uh, and you know this from being a cop, it was different when you're in and post police officers training, uh, right. certified training has dumbed down so much of the things that a, an officer can use to defend themselves. Oh, yeah. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. So you have and a taser that doesn't work half the time. Yeah, it won't work. It's not going to work. And you know what? You're, a lot of stuff doesn't work when you got someone that's like on PCP or something or they're riding something else. You know, I've went into stories on other podcasts about things that I've done and, you know, you see, you see in people that don't have, they're not like human. They, they can take pain like no human. And it's like, it's scary. No matter how much skills and how tough you, you are, it doesn't matter. You know, it's a monster. Someone, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like uh, trying to, you know, wrestle with an ape. It's got eight, seven, eight times the man strength. It's like full yeah. lock adrenaline blast out. Like when, when grandmas can lift a car off a little, you know, a guy working on the car, when grandma pulls up, lifts the whole car because it falls on her husband when he's under right. it trying to change a tire. Yeah. that. Right. that Adrenaline, yeah. Well, like in the movie Superman, I will end it with this because I have to get to that next thing. But no um, problem. Remember when? Remember when the little boy, you know, he came to Earth or whatever for Superman. He picks the car up with one one arm to help yeah. out. It's, that that's what an ape could do that easily. An ape could real, literally rip your arms out of your out of your out of the socket out of the, out of your body. So chimps, big time. Yeah, crazy. Any which way, but loose, my friend. Thanks for tuning in for a wonderful podcast. Chris has another engagement, but we're glad to give you our take on what's going on with Robert De Niro, the Robert De Niro movie review of the day. <laughs> that lady that we showed, Robert De Niro becomes Robert Delusional, was I think one of the best titles I've ever seen. That was great. So good job. I, I did like the bedside reporter reporting from his bed in his messy room at the hotel in Florence. That was a tight. <laughs> that was awesome. He's like a podcaster. You yeah, know, he's, he's, like, <laughs> he's like a podcaster, man. Let me go in the garden or something. Yeah. All right, you guys. Have awesome, a great buddy. Week. Have a great night, man.